Hi guys, I'm back <laughs> again. So well, it looks to me like my years must go from summer to summer. <laughs> so yeah, just a quick recap. It looks to me like the first year that I was talking to you guys, I was dealing with 3D <clears throat> energies, which were fear-based. Um, took a lot longer. I don't know that it was harder, but I had spent four decades preparing for it by having a very, very fear-based life. And this uh, 3D was what, you know, that's what the goal was for the game. So that was obtained, but in order to do that, this planet was really, really fear-based. There's still a lot of fear on this planet. Now, the, although I went through a lot of videos talking to you guys about this, ultimately, the best way of dealing with 3D energies is what I've always said, and that is stay in the now and just concentrate on being a little bit happier this moment than you were the moment before. This day more than yesterday. This, this, this day versus last year. More than you can do just moment by moment. Because there is so much fear around you, you are taught so many fear-based concepts that it is hard to rationalize that. To say, okay, well, here's this fear, I'm going to deal with this fear and this fear alone. Because you were embedded with them from the moment that you were born. Really before that, uh, in utero, you were, you were starting to be embedded with this concept, okay? So... <clears throat> really w went out of a lot of the energies, or I personally did, and brought you guys with me in that first year that I was doing videos. I got over the fear of talking about what my experience was, of being afraid of whether people would judge me or not, uh, being on camera, because I'm not really big into being on camera, getting my picture taken. Uh, got over that, found out that just talking to you guys was was just flat out fun. That no matter how people responded, that it was very cathartic to me over the my life to be able to just say the things that I had experienced. And I understood then why YouTube became so popular back in the day. And I was around when YouTube started. And like I've told you guys, when people just picked up their cameras and just said whatever was on their mind, and back in those days, it, nobody ever dreamed that anybody would be able to find you based on that. That you just put it out in the world on this thing called the internet. And it was just kind of out there that, and you were invisible. So you could speak your mind, you could be who you were, and not worry about judgment because nobody really thought, I think, that anybody would actually see that stuff. And now what it's turned into. But, um... I think my style is more that original, pick up the camera and just talk. So over the last year, I would say it's been more difficult, uh, mostly because although, or the difficulty has been different, although the fear energy coming out of 3D was extremely difficult, I had four decades to practice those vibrations. I was very, very practiced in the vibrations of fear and despair very practice on how to deal with them, how to cope with them, how to get by them, how to not let them bother me. So st stepping through those vibrations, although it's extremely difficult, um, I had practiced at it. And as you know, if you practice something, it's easier. However, in the fourth dimension, that's based on judgment. And my biggest trick in judgment is judging myself. Uh, but I'm not a big judger of other people. I never have been. Um, so dealing with judgment and how that sneaks in has been a lot trickier over the last year. Now, as you guys know, I'm not, I'm not allowed. I don't tell myself what I'm up to at the beginning of things. I don't figure it out until after it's over. So this last year, pretty much enveloping myself all the way from vibrations deeply rooted into fear and despair all the way through a bunch of judgment into that next level of breaking through to those higher vibrations of 4D has been intense to say the least. Uh, mostly for my physical body, 
my physical body has had a very hard time dealing with this so I've had a lot of of issues with my body but coming out of it <laughs> finally now through those two experiences I've had two groups um, that I've dealt with and I want to do the shout out thing or well let's go old school and just say thank you very much with my whole heart one of those groups is the whatsapp group and the whatsapp group is really uh, more a group that is tied to a bunch of groups around the planet that, I'm, that they're not aware of but they are vibrationally and that group is based on the original 3D getting out of 3D concept and that is fear and despair and it's a moment by moment uh, being happier and happier and that's what they concentrate on they try to um, bring in new people we bring in new people periodically but basically it's a vibration of stepping back and forth from fear and despair to happier and happier and all those different stages and steps that that entails no matter where you are because you can be in many many different vibrational levels and fall into fear and despair and the trick is to one right after the other over and over and over to the point of ad nauseum be happier anyway even if you fall down into fear and despair you step out you get up and you do it again and you do it again and you do it again and that's what this whatsapp group has been good at is just keep on keeping on and they support each other in that mostly uh, they run that group themselves <clears throat> with me just a little bit of touch now and then but that's what they're good at they're good at just continuing that because it doesn't matter how far vibrationally we are not really far but how how much we collapse those vibrations of fear and despair are still available you can still drop to them it's not a matter of them not being available the trick is not staying in them you can touch them all day long the trick is to get out as quickly as you can and that's why I really really promote just being a little bit happier not happy don't jump for that guys if you're in <laughs> fear and despair the last thing you can even think of is happiness but you can be a little bit happier so thank you very much to that whatsapp group the other group that I want to say a huge huge thank you is the NCCC group the NCCC group really have done a lot more on intuition than anything else uh, the people that are in this small group are dealing with massive energies this is an agreement before they even came here and all of them are dealing with their expertise outside the gate so they came in to do a specific job they've always done it but now they're going to be doing it more and more consciously and a lot of that has entailed me saying okay here's what's going on and then they have to do it themselves and they have to trust themselves not me they have to trust themselves to that they're doing it and that they feel their way through this this um, very very difficult job these are the people that I've relied on the most over the last year and without them well I would be a lot more miserable than I am right now these people are dealing they've got much fewer groups uh, there's few of these people that they're uh, singular in their job on the planet uh, so they're dealing with massive massive energies and uh, I don't think they realize how massive this energy is and then I correlate all of it and do my thing which is confusing and no no need to go into it so I just want to say thank you to those two groups as I start out on my round three now this last couple months have been pretty pretty intense as we completely stepped out of the lower vibrations of fourth dimension now like I said this is dealing with judgment and the third dimension was ruled pretty much by the geckos what I call the geckos what you might know as the reptilians although there's way more looking entities in there than than entities that look like reptiles uh, or the lizard beings that you guys know about there they come in all shapes and sizes so I prefer to call them the geckos um, that's an inside joke between Stephanie and me we're the ones that decided to call them that and uh, yeah I don't think anybody else will call them that you'll never run into that again it's not some universal agreement or anything the and they're up in your face they're very much do what I say or you will get hurt uh, there's a lot of threats in the third dimension there's a lot, it's all based on fear so even if you've got the biggest stick and you're controlling a bunch of people places or things 
doesn't mean that there's not somebody over you. There's always somebody over you that is ready to thump you on the head. That's the way the fear and despair thing keeps going. That's how that energy is fed. And they did a really, really good job of creating something that nobody thought could be done. Now, the, fifth, the fourth dimension is based more on judgment. So they're sneaky. This is the pigeons. And what they're doing is they're going to try to use you without you realizing it. They're going to sneak up just as sneaky as the fear is. Fear is everywhere. Whether or not your uh, health is okay, to your right education, or I, I mean it's everywhere. Well, in the fourth dimension, judgment is everywhere. It is absolutely everywhere. And it can, everything pretty much used to be fear-based can be translated into a judgment scenario with the pigeons. The trick is they're going to make you think that you've used your mind and you've made assessments based on the knowledge that you have and you've made a judgment call to do a certain thing and that it was up to you, that you did it. You had control of it. But as long as it was based on a judgment, then it really wasn't who you really are call on what you were doing. Now somebody asked me, well, how do you, how do you choose if you're not supposed to judge? And I went, and there's the rub. There's the rub. <laughs> how do you get out of fear unless you know what you're afraid of? And if you know, if you are thinking about what you're afraid of, now you're in fear, how do you get out of it? And that's how these vibrations work, and that's how they're so, so effective. Same thing is true with judgment. And what you have to do is you have to decide, not judge, but just simply make a decision about what you would rather be doing. It's not a judgment of, that's a bad thing, this is a good thing. Those kind of, that kind of thinking has to go away now. There is not a better thing or a worse thing. And I mean, there's no better thing or worse thing uh, with somebody uh, spending their whole life giving to the poor and somebody who is a serial killer. That's how in-depth this is. Okay, that's how in-depth this is, that this is all a game, it's all an experience. And whether or not that experience is, is helping the poor or killing people in horrible ways, it doesn't matter. It's just an experience. That's why you came. That is why you came. You came for other reasons, too, but that is the, the reason why we go into all of our games as gods. Okay? It's for the experience. And then it becomes not, I'm going to do a better thing. And you're not going to step up and become an enlightened person. Like, becoming an enlightened person is a goal and makes you a better person the further along you are. Because, no, that's not right. That is not accurate at all. Simply, you're done with this game, working your way out of this game into another game is what enlightenment is. Uh, it's judgmental to say that, well, you're further along than me because you're more enlightened than me. No, it's just a different part of the game. Uh, there's nothing better or worse on any part of the game. I personally am moving to get out of the game. That doesn't make me better than anyone else. It's simply, I'm telling you what I'm doing for the game. And because of my experience in the past, I can tell you exactly what I'm doing. And frequently, I can help you with yours. But you can change it at any time. That does not make me any better than anyone else. Which leads to something else I want to talk about. I was talking to somebody the other day, and they were talking about all these NDE stories that are coming out. And how that, uh, I don't watch them, as you guys know, but I hear tell they're getting kind of a, a cult following. And I can tell you that I had a, a uh, subscriber that wrote to me, and she's a very sweet, sweet lady. And uh, she wanted to meet up at some point in time. Ended up that she sent me, uh, we talked back and forth a couple times on emails, then she sent me a video. And it was a video on somebody who had reported having an NDE and he had experienced hell and all these different things that were happening to these people. At the end of it, it was supposedly where, he, as it stood right now, the hell that he was going to end up in. And her point was try to convince me that my NDE was wrong and his was right, so that I would come to my senses, come back to the Lord, and be a saved Christian. Okay, whether or not, it, it doesn't matter what happens to these NDE people, okay? You are not going to change any of their, their minds, ever. Not mine, not theirs, ever. And if you'd had an NDE, you would understand that more, so you're just going to have to trust me on this. 
in that when you have one of these out-of-body experiences, you're closer in touch with who you really are. And everything over there feels so much more accurate, so much more true than here, then no one will ever talk you out of it, ever. And I won't. There's nothing wrong with any of the NDE experiences. They're absolutely exactly what they were meant to be for that person. It is a perfect experience for them. Perfect experience for them. And I'm not saying what I'm about to say because one is better than the other. Don't get me wrong, but it is the only way that I can give this an analogy that perhaps you'll understand. When you go and talk to a four-year-old, and the four-year-old is in their world and they've got the perfect house and the perfect toys and mom and dad are superheroes. You don't sit down on your knees and you don't say, no, there's much better toys. They're here. And your parents are not superheroes. They're very human and they make mistakes. You don't do that. You support that child, that four-year-old child. You say, absolutely, these are wonderful toys. You have perfectly awesome parents, don't you? Well, then if somebody, you go and you talk to a teenager, and the teenager says, well, I can do this, this, and this, and nothing will stop me, you don't get in their face and say, well, this is all the stuff that can stop you. You don't do that. You be supportive of where they are in that moment. Well, these other NDE stories are the same way. You don't get in their faces and say, no, this is wrong. I don't, and I won't. Uh, I would never do that. I'm simply saying what I experienced when I went out there. Now, it just so happens, just so happens, I didn't work for it on this planet. I didn't deserve it from a human standpoint. It was the way it was planned. Just so happened that when I died, I went way out there and could turn around and see where all these other people went. I know exactly where they went. I know why they come back and they feel the way that they do. And I would never, ever get in the way of that. And I hope that you guys don't either. What you do is, if you're going to go listen to those NDE people, what I would hope you would walk away is hear their voices. Look in their eyes so that you will understand and believe with everything in your gut and your soul that there is something past death here. Something past, past death here. Because still, on this planet, one of the biggest fears for humans is the fear of death. Now, you're in a human skin suit, and that skin, human skin suit has a consciousness, and it is afraid to die. So, as a conscious part of this, this relationship that you have with this skin suit, it behooves you to softly and gently convince this human skin suit that it's a part of Gaia and it can never die. And, and understand yourself that your consciousness that inhabits this skin suit can never die. There's no such thing. You're simply a change of condition, a change of perspective, a change of clothing, so to speak. Instead of being in this outfit, you're going to be in another outfit. Or you may not be in any outfit. You may be in energy form. It's simply a change of perspective. Nothing ever dies. Can't die. You can't die. Nothing ever does. Okay? So when you're listening to these NDE people, there we go, back to the judgment thing again. What you can get caught up in, and what I'm seeing is, okay, they'll believe one person, and they'll latch onto their story, and then it becomes like this cult-like following, that this is the way it is on the other side. The other side is a very, very big place, guys. If I were to talk to somebody who was raised in a small village in South America, They've never, uh, let's just say, although I can't imagine this, let's say that they don't have the internet and they don't know what's going on in the rest of the world and you sat down and you had a discussion with them. You said, okay, what is Earth like? What is Earth like? And they gave you the rundown from their perspective of what Earth is like. You wouldn't argue with them, right? That is their Earth. That is their experience. At the same token, if we went over to a super rich family, in New York City, and you said, okay, what's the earth like? What is the earth like? Their perspective would be no more accurate than the one in South America Small Village. It's a part of the story. It's a part of the story. You wouldn't argue with them either. What you all need to understand is everyone, everything's truth is true. Everyone. 
every moment of every day. What you believe, what you experience, what you know is true. Every bit of it. But it's not accurate. Accuracy is obtained by understanding that everybody has a piece of what is accurate. And if you want to get to accuracy, you start accumulating those truths. You don't rule out one for the other. You don't say, okay, I'm going to collect this data. This is more real than that one. Therefore, taking this one, I'm throwing that one out. That's judgment. So what you do is you start accumulating all these truths and put them together. And the more you accumulate, the more you accept, the more you believe, the more you uh, bring into yourself someone else or someone something else's truth the closer to accuracy you become and the closer to accuracy you get the closer to oneness you'll get because oneness true oneness is a culmination of all of these truths and an understanding that that's the point the point is to take the all that is take a little bit of it here there here there put it together have a unique experience throw that back in the pot not to have the experience of being all that is. We had that before you came here. The goal is not to do that here. The goal is to take a part of all that is and have a unique experience with it. That's the goal. Okay? Alright guys. Uh, I think we're going to cut it off right there. I love you guys so much. I uh, appreciate you watching. Please subscribe. Send this off to your friends. Thumbs up for me and hit that bell. Alright? Uh, I love you guys so much. Huge hugs. I'll see you later. Bye now.